All right, so um, our guest speaker tonight is Bob Adams, and he is our Cape County Assessor. And um, I would say Bob is a friend, although I know his wife much better. We worked together for many years down at Scott City School. She's a beautiful lady, beautiful, beautiful, all the way around, musician, and uh, we just love Lorraine. So anyway, um, our speaker tonight, he is the current Cape County Assessor. He was elected in 2012 and he is licensed real estate appraiser for over 30 years. He, is, he was the owner of Adams Appraisal Service, appraised nearly, I can believe this, 40,000 properties. It's just a lot. Of multiple classifications and sizes. He's a certified member of the Appraisal Institute, Jackson City Council member from 1977 to 1983, Significant long-term community service, including membership in the Jackson Rotary Club and Jackson Evening Optimist Club. A lifelong member, volunteer with the Boy Scouts of America, serving multiple local district and council roles, and the deacon of the First Baptist Church of Jackson. I didn't know if I should read that one right. Is that still true? No, I've moved churches. Since. I was going to say, I know, he's going to Mercy Hill. So anyway, with no further ado, I'm going to get my stuff out of the way here, and we will please welcome Bob Adams. Well, sorry, I fumbled around there just a little bit. I think I need to revise that bio. I haven't, uh, <laughs> I haven't looked at that in a long time. There were some changes in there, uh, but that's okay. I'm, I thank you for letting me come this evening. Uh, I've, um, I've enjoyed my tenure as, uh, as the assessor in Cape County. Uh, people keep telling me why I don't retire and uh, I don't know, I'm still having fun, so I don't want to quit working. But I thought maybe we would just start off with a few little facts about assessors and what they do in the state, because I think I answer the same questions over and over and over again for uh, some misconceptions of what we do. In Missouri, assessors are not tax assessors. And I know you all equate that with me. They are property assessors. Our, we have three basic responsibilities. We are to discover taxable property, we are to list that taxable property, and we are to value it. Uh, tax rates and ceilings, all those kind of things are set by the people. People vote on them, they, have, um, they implement them, and everybody wants their property to appraise for a lot of money until it comes to my job. But in reality, that's what, that's what I do. I just put a value on properties and send that certified list to uh, the county clerk and the county collector and go, a copy goes to the state, of course. But all those tax rates and those ceilings are set by you. Uh, annual rates, uh, they can go up to you know, your, your voting districts can all uh, vary their uh, levies within those districts to a limit that is set by statute or by voters of the people. Uh, the annual ceilings uh, in all these jurisdictions are based, and then they're based on the assessed value. And the assessed values are what is used for the tax collection. Now, the, set, the, the assessment role is certified by me, and I'm giving it to the collector, and then she sends out the tax bills. There are over 39,000 parcels of real estate in our county. So that, you know, that's, uh, to me, that's kind of a staggering number. It's huge. Um, our local real estate has a, set, a combined assessed value of um, 
1.8 to 1.9 billion dollars. Uh, our state assessed railroads and utilities. Now, I have nothing to do with the value on um, on the railroads that run through here and transmission lines from Ameren or whoever it might be. Those are all set you know, assessed by the state. And those are the total in our county of $65 million in value. The personal property within the county totals $345 million. So we also have some uh, TIF districts that, uh, that have an assessed value of about $8.6 million. Those TIF districts, of course, are tax abatement places in which you, uh, again, those are created within your communities. Uh, I'm gonna get over here just a little further. Now, we only assess, reassess properties on odd number of years. So this is the year, you're gonna get a reassessment notice this year. Um, I heard some rumbling, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't like your value, if you think there's something wrong with it, with it you can appear before the BOE, the Board of Equalization as they call it, and you can disagree with it, and there's a process for going through all that. Now, I will tell you, in Cape County, we have had very, very few uh, appeals. Uh, formal appeals in the last five years hasn't av probably averaged two. Now, each year we do something a little different here in Cape County than some other counties. Uh, we do informal appeals where if someone has an issue, they can contact my office and we'll go through a, a review with them. And we can explain how we got where we are and they can explain where they are. And if we've made a mistake, of course, we want to know it. We want to fix it. Uh, and we're quick to do that. Um, the, the major appeal that I've had, the, uh, <laughs> let me back up just a second. My first day in office, I'm not, this is truth. I'm sitting behind my desk, fat, dumb, and happy, not knowing what was going to happen next. And one of my employees that you know that I inherited came in and said, "Hey, I've got a meeting in the next room over here. You might want to sit in on this." So I did. It was an it was an appeal from um, Ameren Natural Gas in Cape County. They were appealing their assessment. They wanted it lowered by 65%. And the, uh, our chief appraiser was, is the one that called me into the meeting. He says, guys, I don't know what I can do. We're meeting with the superintendents. Uh, he said, I don't know what we can do about this. Uh, I don't know how to appraise a utility company. And he looked at me and I said, well, I don't know how to, I've never appraised one either, but I think I can find somebody that can. <laughs> and we've been, in a, we've been in a lawsuit with Ameren for 10 years. As if you think, it's just unbelievable. Uh, and it's, it's gone on forever. It is, there is nothing right about it. Um, we, the first thing we asked them when we had a joint meeting with several counties, we said, all right, we lower your, assessment by 60 percent how much will you lower your utility rates <laughs> yeah and you know what they told me of course zero. <laughs> zero so anyway i've got an education in that regard that i never expected to get and really don't know what i'm going to do with it after i leave office but um I have met some wonderful people, and uh, we created something that's been new in, in the state of Missouri. Uh, we created a mutual defense fund, and we had 19 counties participate in this. And uh, uh, that's the only way you can survive with a company as big as, as, big as Ameren, is just to uh, 
get enough support from outs besides yourself because you just can't stand the expense and the uh, uh, the expertise it takes to do that. We ended up with a lawyer out of Michigan and an appraiser out of New Jersey, and they both talked like they were from that part of the country. <laughs> so, but we've been very effective. I think we'll be. Uh, this will be the year where I think we'll get to the Supreme Court. We've been trying to get there now for all these years, and I think we got a good shot at it. So that just shows you some of the pitfalls that you can have with the BOE and some of the appeals processes that go on throughout the state. It used to that we could count on the Missouri State uh, Tax Commission to help us and back us up in some of the, with some of the expertise. And their mission has changed over the years. I mean, they've, <coughs> they've changed it themselves. They, uh, they no longer really support your local assessing community. Their, their role is more of a, a hearing, of hearing officers. So, but in any case, we can just, uh, I think I've beat that dead horse about as far as I can take for it. Um, there are no windfall tax breaks in our state. If, um, if your annual increase in value and assessments that go across the board go up over 5%, 5% or more, the 5% are the consumer price index and not including new construction, the tax rate has to be rolled back. So that's one of the things that you can do and you, can, you all are running for school boards can look at and see if, make sure your school builders are rolling back when they should. Sometimes they don't do that. In some parts of the state, it's just really bad, but uh, uh, they're supposed to roll it back so there could be no more of an increase in the 5%. And that's that's the Hancock log. How many of you old enough remember when that came about? There's, yeah, there's about two or three of us. Uh, it's been around a while, but Hancock Amendment is uh, uh, it, it's supposed to be that leveling of things. The property taxes are dependent upon the taxpayer input and how you how you support tax rates when they come across from your schools or from your fire districts or your libraries, uh, whatever those things may be. Um, there, there are a number of side little issues. And you talk about reading the Constitution. I mean, it, yeah, you can read the statutes, how they apply to the assessor's office. And it's, it's uh, some of it's kind of interesting reading, but by, the, by and large, those set of statutes aren't nearly what is being uh, used to guide us anymore. There's so many court cases out there and there's so many hearing decisions and uh, little side uh, statutes has been passed by legislators. Right now there are 43 bills at, in the House uh, and Senate dealing with the assessment within the state. 43. And, and some of them are as off the wall as you can imagine. Uh, there's a Senator Eigel in um, St. Charles County. I don't know if you even know him. Um, he wants to, he's got a bill out there that says that anytime your real estate goes up, your personal property will come down a like amount. And his goal is to get rid of personal property taxes completely. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it makes the taxing districts, it's going to take 20 years with his plan to do it, to get it eliminated. But you're talking about 20 years of revenue neutral for your school districts and all the taxi districts in the county. Uh, I don't know of any business or any enterprise that can get along with uh, a zero gain in any kind of income or in the next 20 years. I mean, you wouldn't bid a job if you're a contractor and hold that price for 20 years. You just can't do it. So. That's some of the things we fight. And I'll tell you while I'm in this little part of it, I'm chairman of our state association's legislative committee. So the last couple of years, I've been in Jeff City way more than I wanna be. 
Uh, but I've, again, as part of that education I've gotten that I don't know what to do with when I quit. Because <laughs> I don't want to go back up there. All right, let's see. Now, how do we how do we come up with the values that we use? We're not allowed uh, we're not allowed access to uh, the MLS systems through the realtors organizations. They don't want to let us do that. So we try to obtain as many valid sales of real estate to do our analysis on how to come up with some values. That's an important part. We also look uh, real heavily on uh, new construction and costs of new construction and how much of that is changing as we go forward. And of course, we're looking at the income potential for commercial real estate. Uh, Diane back there has worked for me so many, so many years ago that, and she probably understands that better than I do anymore. And she always was smarter than me. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> A lot of us, we know that. <laughs> Keeps us in well, she's pretty, she's pretty special. Um, but keeping the values equalized over time. And again, what we want in our goal is to, for any given neighborhood, for there to be a flattening of values through the neighborhood. I mean, your house may be more something different than this house, but there should be a correlation between them that's fair and equitable. And that's what we strive to do. And in doing that, we use a system, it's called the CAMA, Computer Assisted, you know, da 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 da. Software, it's a, it's a multi-parcel parcel adjustment basis. We would try to, when we adjust values, we try to do it in neighborhoods and in group areas. Um, we have, um, in 21, we were supposed to, we should have adjusted values. I didn't because we were right in the middle of a software conversion. And that software conversion was, you know, the conversion from hell. It took forever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, we finally got through it. But we couldn't do raising of any kind of values and adjusting values during that period of time because it was such a, a massive undertaking. And again, there's 39,000 pieces of real estate that we have to apply that to. The other thing we, another thing we use is a, a company called Pictometry. If you've looked at our website and you've looked at our maps, the aerial photography you're looking at comes from a company called Pictometry. Um, this last flight that we had uh, two years ago, uh, probably three years ago now, um, was the best photography we ever had. We uh, we did it in what's called three inch, and it's real. It's really. Uh, I think it's exceptional. It's, we really like it. We also use uh, the permits that are issued by the city of Cape and the city of Jackson to kind of see what kind of new construction is going on and, and look at what they're showing is their cost in that arena. And of course we drive by a lot of stuff. We constantly in the county trying to review uh, different, different sections of the county at a time. We, we create, oh thank you, we create uh, assessment lists. Uh, and, and the new construction list, we like to look at it in blocks of several properties. And by doing that, you get more of an average as you move through the different um, quality levels. You know, we've got, you know, starter homes and we have some very expensive homes. When I first got in the office, I think our county had two houses over a million dollars. I think we've got about 30 now. You know, it's, it seems like it. It's getting to the point now where a million dollar house isn't hardly anything. Uh, <laughs> well, I, that sounds kind of crazy, but it's it, it's 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 scary. Um, much of this, and we we internally talk about this all the time. It's almost you feel like it's an impossible task. Um, the state task commission 
wants us to be between 90 and 120% of value. As long as my values are in that range, they leave us alone. Uh, they do racial studies on us to see where we are with that, within that range. Um, I remember my, my first racial study I went through with the state tax commission, they, they called me up on the phone and said, Bob, we want to tell you, uh, congratulate you. Your county is within tolerance. You're at 91.6% of market value. And I said, oh, I'm a percent too high. Because <laughs> my goal has always been, if I can stay as close to 90% and keep the state off my back and keep everybody's properties fairly and equitably assessed across the board, we're all paying as little as we have to. You know. So that works some of the time. Right now, um, I think our ratio, the state task commission says our ratio is at 81%. So we're 9% right. low. Uh, in reality, we're probably at about 78%. You know. Now, so this year we're gonna see a raise in, in real estate values across the board, not across the board, through, through much of the county. But we'll, we won't take that whole bite at one time. I mean, and, and I got a couple reasons for thinking this way right now. We've gone through a period of time where we've had home values inflate very fast. And now with interest rates going up, we're starting to see those, especially in your more, um, your hotter markets where the sales are really aggressive. You're starting to see those values fall back off. So my goal is hopefully we're going to see some leveling of the value field and we'll be able to uh, raise a little and, and account for the deflation just a little bit where the market's kind of adjusting itself. Those of us that are old enough to remember it, we've seen a number of these times where values climb real fast and they pull back. And so right now we're in a pullback. So we're going to try to catch it in the middle someplace. Um, I think, I think that's about all I wanted to tell you. Let me go, let me look at the last page here real quick. Um, you know, for public, for uh, if you've looked at our tech, our records at the, our, in my office, another thing we did when I took office was I put all of, uh, we opened it up old records so you could look it up online yourself. And um, that's been, that's been a godsend. I mean, it's, it's cut our foot traffic and phone traffic by probably 90%. We just don't hardly have anybody call us anymore and ask us about those things because they can look it up themselves pretty easily. Um, the mapping information we got also helps the public a great deal. You get to kind of look at things and, and if you're interested in a property, you can kind of go on there and find it and get your way through it. You can look and make sure the transfer information is correct on it. You can look at the booking page. You've got the aerial photography. And that's where a lot of people will say, my value is too high. And the first question I'm gonna ask you when you come to me with that is, would you sell it for that? <laughs> Most people say no. <laughs> you know, they, they think it's worth a little bit more than that. So. That's what we do in a nutshell. I mean, I've, I've kind of cattled through this kind of quickly, but I'm more than happy to try to answer any questions you got. Um, in fact, I'd like to. Yes, sir. Uh, you're dealing with Ameren on the property evaluate. Was the Public Service Commission, you know, because they're I know. licensed by the state of Missouri, can't you bend them over a barrel? Well, I'll tell you what, it, what's real. You know, you've heard about companies that have two sets of books. I bet they got three. Yeah. <laughs> the value of their company that they tell the, the Public Service Commission, the value of the company they tell their stockholders, is, and the value they're asking from me are three different values. 
I mean, that's just the Not reality of it. Um, to me, they're just. Um, can't, couldn't you can't you kind of semi pin them down like that though? Well, if you were talking to reasonable people, but what happens is, um, I've been in three depositions. They've taken my deposition three times. I've testified in court five times on this issue. Um, what you what happens it, when you get into a situation like this is all you're dealing with is the attorneys. We worked out a settlement all three or four years ago. We were sitting in the room with Ameren employees, not the not the executives, but some of their employees and their attorneys, and we worked out a compromise for the whole thing. Walked out of the room thinking we were done. The next day they notify us that the C-suite rejected it, so we we're right back where we were. Uh, it just goes on and on like that. Okay. Oh. Well, Bob. Okay. Yes. Bob, we have actually asked our people to write down questions so that I can ask them of you. Good. So anybody else sitting out here that is thinking of questions, uh, raise your hand and Sharon can bring you a piece of paper and you can write your question down. All right, so here's a question, Bob. TIFs have been controversial and erratically successful. How do you see them here in Cape County? Uh, <clears throat> when a TIF board is set up, everybody's in love with it. There's management, there's people involved, and there's uh, a lot of interest in it. And, uh, and everybody's doing the responsible thing. Two or three years down the road, they start losing interest in it. And then the records aren't kept up the way they're supposed to be. I mean, I really have very little to nothing to do with the TIF district, except I carry a spreadsheet with them on it so that I know where they're at in my parcel count. And, uh, but uh, it's TIF is tax increment financing. And, um, in downtown Cape on Main Street, most of that is in the TIF district. The Marriott Hotel and the old hotel across the street, the Sound Office Building, those are all in TIF districts. Um, I, they're the most sued entity in the country. Uh, and it, it normally starts happening about four or five years down the road. And because people managing to stop doing what they're supposed to do, they're just letting it drift along. And uh, I think they serve a purpose, but I don't think they're administered very well long term. I mean, in the short term, I think they're a good thing. They can help some people. Yeah. What they are is, uh, uh, and all the big buildings downtown were built this way, they a piece of property has to qualify as being uh, condemned, not condemned, but blighted. Down. Blighted. Blighted, yeah. 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 And and they got those where the Marquette and the Marriott and the Broadway Federal and there's others. And uh, so a contractor comes in, they, they get a TIF district, it's, it says if you'll develop this, we will forego your property taxes for I think 20, 23 years or something. I think it's 20 years, yeah. Okay. And so but you have to invest that money into the property, basically. Yeah. And, and actually what they want us to do is, we want to, they want to know the value of the property before it goes in the TIF. And then they want the redevelopment value of the property, which raises the tax entity. You know, they'll actually come to me and say, could you raise my value a little bit? It, we need to get it up a little higher. But because what happens is, they only have to pay the tax based on what the original was. Right. The new tax money is collected and put back into the TIF district. So, and the school board and others who use that property tax money have to agree to it. Yes, they do. When they start, yeah. Yeah, the school district all sign off on it. Okay, next question. Do you use the same aerial photo system as the clerk? She's using mine. <laughs> <laughs> She's using yours. All right. Oh. Um, how 
is valuation affected by changing economic conditions? Do what now? I'm sorry. How is valuation affected by changing economic conditions? Okay, you're talking about uh, depreciation or a lack thereof or an appreciation of value. Um, well, for any of us, when we maintain our properties and keep it up in good shape, we're maintaining the value of the property. We're spending money on it. We're hopefully either maintaining it or increasing its value. Um, the reverse is true. If you if you're real hard on a property, you can have a 10 year old home and just live in it really hard. And it might have a, a depreciated value of about a, a 15 or 20 year old house. So yes, maintaining your property keeps the value up. Is that what you're asking? I'm not was that, that was my question. I was asking about more general things like COVID or a recession over the whole economy. What does that do to the valuations in a county like this? Okay. Well, you, you saw in the last few years, we've seen values of property really run up. You saw building materials shoot through the roof. All those things took, uh, I, I can think of one subdivision real quick out here in Jackson off of PP. When they first started selling homes in there, they were selling them from one hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and then all of a sudden, two, three years later, they're selling for three hundred thousand dollars, two seventy-five, three, and that just ran up real fast. You couldn't even keep up with it as far as knowing where you're at. But now, but that was cheap money. That's part of the economy you're talking about. That was cheap money, one and two percent interest on loans. Um, now we're, I think today that the banks are charging eight percent on rent, on mortgages. So that's going. To, that's why you're seeing the the market soften a little bit, and you're seeing a lot less new construction. I had a builder tell me the other day that he's only building one house at a time. When he gets that one finished, he'll start another. In the past, he's had five and six houses under construction. So. They're, they're being cautious. Yeah. Okay, State Freedom Caucus. I don't know if you're familiar, I'm not, but the question is, why doesn't Missouri have one? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, you, I'm not real familiar with what they do on a national basis. I do know that in the, in the Senate last year, there was a lot of controversy among the senators. There's a, um, a group that were, I guess I could call them ultra conservative. They were very aggressive about taxation and, and looking for ways to eliminate things. <coughs> they, got, they kept the Senate so stirred up last year, the, really the benefit for all of us in the state was that they got very little done. They passed very few bills because they're too busy fighting with each other. Uh, this year, they've called a truce, and, I, <laughs> and you can tell on January one, there were over twelve hundred bills filed. In a good year, they might pass sixty. So if they're only passing sixty, and they got twelve hundred trying to work their way through the system. And that's not all of them. There's been more filed since then. But that's, uh, I'm not real familiar with the Creek Freedom Caucus and it wouldn't have anything to do with me probably. Okay. All right, next question. Whispering Oaks is in city of Cape Girardeau and has a Cape address. Mm -hmm. And they are in the Jackson School District. How does that work? Where are their taxes going? Okay. Uh, to the city of Cape Schools or to the Jackson Schools where their children attend? They're going to Jackson Schools. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, one of the uh, uh, people running for mayor in Cape, this is before Fox back, he, he was at a Rotary meeting I was at and he says, I'm going to correct this problem. He said, there are homes in the city of Cape Girardeau that are not supporting our schools. We want them to support our schools. We're going to fix that. 
and I just smiled and sitting back in the room because you can go to Kansas uh, Overland, I think it is right north of the side of Kansas City. There are eight school districts in that one town. Wherever those lines are, that money on those taxation goes to that school. So, okay. You know, uh, that's why you've seen Jackson School District uh, fare a little better in some ways than Cape has. Okay. Uh, we're coming to the end of our questions. I only got a couple here yet. So if you've thought of any questions that you want to write down, raise your hand. We'll get you a piece of paper. Okay. All right. I was handed this one and told me I, it's about the Ameren UE issue and that I might not want to read it. So I'm just going to read it and you go with whatever <laughs> your thoughts are. Okay. So the title is How About a Remedy? Since Ameren is a corporation and is doing business in the state as a privilege, why not petition the legislature to investigate the company to see if they are following the laws of their creation? If they are not following the laws of their creation, the state can revoke their license and run them out of town. That would be this person's suggestion. Sounds reasonable. In a, in, a, in a perfect world, I think that'd be great. Uh, when you look at, uh, in the past, we've had three members. The state tax commission is made up, is, the leadership is three people. All three of them are ex-senators. They're time limited out, and they, because of some whatever favor from the governor, he gave them the appointment to this job. It pays very well, it pays about a hundred and a quarter. And so he gives those appointments. If you go back and you look at those three plus probably half of the Senate and maybe two thirds of the House, um, they all take campaign money from Amron. So, I mean, does that answer your question? I mean, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very difficult situation. Now, in the past, we've had a couple senators. One from Camp, we used to have at Popper Bluff. He, uh, he hated him. And he openly would tell you that and tell anybody that came close to him. And if something came up on the, the floor for them, he could, he could rattle on for an hour. So but there's just not enough of those. Okay. Um, I mean, I can also, I can go on with that for, I can talk about Ameren for a couple of days. Um, Maybe uh, we'll let anybody that has more questions regarding see you, see you after the meeting. And sure, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave some of my business cards here. Awesome. And even, and it's got my phone numbers on it. If you need to, just call me anytime. Okay, I'm going to break my rule here for somebody who's got a little issues with writing. All she has to say for health reasons, I assume. So I'm going to let her talk into the mic. Thank you. Uh, as I understand, at one point, uh, there was some land that Cape Girardeau didn't want to expand into the school district. So Jackson took the area, which is why Jackson has a larger school district. Is it possible that when Cape expanded their city limits, they went over into that already Jackson School District land? Is that possible? Oh, that's, 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 well, it, that's what's happened. I mean, Jackson School District was established for, gosh, I don't know how many years. But as Cape has expanded, Cape has been captive, really, when you look at it. They got, they've got been limited growth-wise by the Mississippi on one side. You've got the Diversion Channel on the south. And, you got, and they just, in the last few years, have jumped across I-55. Their primary place to go for the city has been north, but most all of that is Jackson School District, right on over to now Holcomb School District, and um, that's just the way it is. Those battles have been fought in courts numerous times, and it takes a vote of both districts to change those boundary lines, and you aren't going to get a school district to give up part of their district. Uh, that just isn't going to happen. Uh, I mean, I. There's been a number of lawsuits trying to force that, and 
uh, it's gone to the Supreme Court and you're just wasting a lot of money. Interesting. Okay, you guys, I'm coming to the last two questions. So if you need a piece of paper, raise your hand. Okay. All right. So next question. Do you anticipate an increase in property assessments this year? Yes. Do you want to elaborate any more than that? <laughs> Will it be universal? No. We're going to, we're not. Again, I'll raise, I'm going to raise the assessment. It's got, I got nothing to do with how the taxes are administered on that, but I will, we're going to raise the value probably in a big part of the county around 6%. Why? Sorry, oh, there's the word, why? <laughs> That's okay. Uh, because we're about, uh, we're about 20, 15 to 16% behind where we have to be to meet the state requirements. Okay. We need to be at least 90% and we're not there. So it looks like a taxpayer is going to get bit in the butt <laughs> this year. We got a lot of people wanting money from us. Anyway, all right. Anybody else have a question they wrote down? Because I got the last one right here and it's the big question, Bob. Do you plan to run in 2024? <laughs> Well, I still am having a lot of fun. I enjoy my job and I enjoy the people I work with. I enjoy the uh, camaraderie from the other assessors around the state. We, uh, uh, we, we have a very close working relationship with each other and we support each other as far as knowledge about things. I mean, let's take, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, Jackson School District is made up 53% of Jackson School District, I'm, I'm calling this from memory now, so you might get a contradiction, is Agland. Agland values haven't gone up any in the, since 1984. I, there's been a, a dollar or two fluctuation, I mean just minute changes less than a percent um, they haven't changed at all in the 80s when reassessment was done statewide it was court forced for the state of Missouri to reassess everything they dumped a lot of money it cost the state about 80 million dollars to do the reassessment statewide when they did that they established the different uh, tax uh, different assessments for the different classifications. We got residential at 19%, you got your personal property at 33%, and you got ag land at 12%. Your home and your businesses around the county have gone up over 400% since the 80s. Ag land has not changed at all. Now, I have, a, I have a close relationship with the agricultural community. I love it. I, 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 some of my best friends are involved in it. And I don't want there to be a, a ruinous type of change. But I don't get to set those values on ag land. That's done by the state. And the state, every two years, hires the University of Missouri to do an ag land value. Now, we're not talking about market value when we talk about ag land value in Missouri. We're talking about productive value, which is a whole lot less than what the market is selling land for. <clears throat> that has been shifting a greater burden onto residential and commercial real estate for all these years because of that inequity between between ag land and your home. So, and in reality, ag land is not valued at 12% anymore. In reality, they're at about five or 6%. But the statute says they will be valued at 12%. But because the legislature won't act on the, um, Ag land value. They won't. They won't 
forces to be used throughout the state. So we just sit there and let let our homes and our uh, commercial properties take it in the shorts. You know, that's just that's just a reality. I mean, our, our, I had a guy come in my office a year and a half ago, and he said he was sponsoring a bill to go to Jeff City where he was gonna he was gonna lower ag land value taxes by seven to eight dollars an acre. And I looked at him kind of funny. I said, well, that's kind of strange. I said, then the state's going to be paying you to own the land because right now they're only paying about $5 an acre. <laughs> you know, so, but if you go to Kansas, Kansas is like $60, $70 an acre. Iowa is say 50 to $75 an acre. So I'm not advocating that. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to go out here and say, Bob Adams wants you to raise that your ag lands that high. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. But the only prudent and fair thing to do is to move it all along together and keep it together so that we're all paying as little as we have to. Mm. That's... Answer the question? <laughs> Diane wants to know, did you answer the question? I don't know. <laughs> no. What? Say, answer the question again. I, don't, I Maybe I missed it. Um, oh, am I running again? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I think it know. actually. I was hoping she'd let me chase that rabbit and get away with it. I think actually that question. the question is about why the increase in property assessments this year. Well, you see, my uh, I'll tell on myself. I'm 75 years old, soon to be 76. I don't know that I see myself being in office at 80. <laughs> You know, so that's as close as I can tell you that. Well, that certainly is an evasive politic political answer. Uh, I mean, it, uh, well, I hope so, because but again, I I like what I'm doing, right. and my health is still good enough to let me do it. Um, I don't know. I think that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> I'd like for um, okay, click on that. There you can see who owns it, right here on this line. Um, you can go up the street and check on every one of them if you want to, or you can check on the on this link over here. Right. Bring that up, and then the blue one right there. Click on that, okay. and then can you just make that bigger, a little bit bigger? You can. Then you can see there what the. Uh, um, assessed value is on land. Here it's forty three thousand one hundred. The house is at twelve two twelve. So there's the total value. So. Well, Bob, I know I'm old, but has anybody said anything about the lack of privacy or protection? I mean, anybody and their brother can go look at my house. Yeah. Well, now Jan here, she uh, she's been on me a lot. <laughs> This is really disturbing to me. Well, but it's all public knowledge. It's public data, and it's been available for years. This has just made it a little more convenient to look at it. Look at it. This, this is just on the internet here. You can go down oh, to the yeah. county and buy a flat book, get all the same information, yeah. and that's been around since I was a kid. Yeah, I know, but we don't need to make it easy for everybody to know our business. <laughs> So, so I first contacted Bob, I guess that was a couple of years ago, because I said, Bob said, well, we have to take pictures of anything we collect taxes on. So I understand that. And so, but my, my concern at the time, it zoomed in on my front door and my, um, the swing set, the grandkids swing set. 
And so my argument was, or not argument, because he understood 100% of what I was saying. So I said, I want that picture off of there because we're not on a beaten path, we're up. And so if there's a predator who says, ah, they'll never see and have driven by, they can't see my home from the road. You see where I'm going. They have kids playing in the yard, who knows? And so Bob graciously took my picture down off of there. And I looked a while back, it wasn't up there. Is it up there? Okay. <laughs> so it's one of those things you have to opt out of, but I was very concerned, right? As we all should be, because to make me up. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> This is being recorded, Bob. <laughs> well, I did, no, I didn't. Um, but I said, so he's, so it, interestingly enough, he was getting ready to go to a um, child abduction or um, a seminar just shortly after our conversation. But I, he said, we have to take these pictures. I said, but a predator is not going to come into his office to look for those pictures. So those pictures are on file, but they're in his office, and a predator's not going to do that. So anyway, my house is not on the. <laughs> And, and that is a bit of a problem for us, though, because we do get, when I took office, we had zero pictures in the files of properties. Back in the 80s, the way the county took pictures was they put a movie camera on the window of a car and they drove up and down the streets and got pictures of the entire county that way. And then they had that on file that you could look at. And it was, um, but as technology changes and we evolve into a better, more efficient way of doing things, um, so, the pictures are there. I, and I can't guarantee her picture won't be down forever because uh, you might not run again. <laughs> I may not run again in the state, and the state doesn't like it. You know, they and they do. If I stay out of compliance with my values. They can they can withhold the county funding. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a and that's so a kind of, you for funding. <laughs> it is a they, it is a string they have on it. Now at the same time, my budget in the county is unique to most every other office holder in the county. The money that is set aside for the assessment of the community cannot be used for anything else other than the assessment of our county so if i don't spend all the money that comes into my budget it stays there as unencumbered funds most counties have an under a uh, fund that's unencumbered and it's necessary because when we do things like uh, software software upgrades or fly the county for new imagery uh, that the, the the flight we did there was two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars so you know I give you an idea software can cost uh, for a county like Cape County we're a first-class county one of 13 14 counties in, out of 114 uh, first-class counties our software is more expensive than anybody else because it's mostly based on the per parcel type of thing so uh, software cost anywhere from that upgrade we did was around half a million dollars. Um, How did we get to that picture? Um, I don't remember. How that you just clicked on it. Well, so now, so that's a whole different picture in the city than it is. Why do they have to have such close ups? You know, because. Well, that's, a, that's the house next door. You just moved around. Yeah. You can see the pool. We found a lot of pools by using this imagery. And one of the neat things we can do, that, and you're taxed you know, for your pool, and you're taxed well, for your day. One of the neat things we can do with that imagery is, I think, it's kind of cool. You can split the screen, and I can have the current imagery on one side, and let's say uh, 2010 imagery on the other. And as I pull the mouse, drag a street up, it drags both sides together, so you can see visually the changes from one side to the other. Well, over those period of years, what what differences there are. So it, it kind of gives you a, a neat way of doing some review in different areas to keep up with things. Yes, sir. I just added a nice tree house for my grandchildren. Will that increase my property tax? No, we won't do that. Okay. 
It's a pretty nice one. That's what I gotta do. Gotta call it a tree house. <laughs> okay. Well, one of my one of my best friends, I keep telling him his uh, his deer stand looks more like a condo. You know, and I refer to it as a condo all the time, and he's just you know worried that I'm gonna put it on the assessment record. So, so deer stands are not. Okay. Uh, we don't all pick right. up deer stands either. <laughs> All right. Well, how about a big round of applause for our council? Well, thank you very much. You'll hang around for questions afterward? Oh, yeah. Uh, and there's my cards. If anybody okay. Wants. We'll put these if anyone would like to get in touch. Bob has always been very readily available. Um, he's even texting now, so uh, that's just... <laughs>